Hi guys, Dane here. Today I'm going to be doing a review of The Fridge Hiker's Guide to Life. How to stay cool when you're feeling the heat by Tony Hawks. Uh, he's a British comedian. He wrote a book called Round Island with a Fridge where he hitchhiked around Ireland with a fridge as the result of a bet. And that's kind of what makes this weird because this is like a selection of like insights into life that he developed from that trip. But in doing that he also has to explain the trip. So it sort of feels a bit redundant. It feels like he's telling the same story again. But hey ho, I still enjoyed it. Um, so I'm going to read you, I've actually tabbed out the blurb here. Many moons ago, a foolhardy attempt to win a drunken bet resulted in Tony Hawks embarking on one of the most unforgettable experiences of his life. Joined by his trusty travelling companion, come domestic appliance, i.e. his fridge, he found himself in the midst of a remarkable, inspirational and, at times, downright silly adventure. His journey was chronicled in a book that would go on to be an international bestseller, Round Island with a Fridge. In The Fridge Hiker's Guide to Life, Tony looks back on what he learned on his chaotic quest. Namely, if all you have between birth and death is a journey, and if the journey is all we have, then wouldn't it be best to make it fun? That's why I tapped it. Such is the philosophy of The Fridge. Reflecting on the many encounters he had along the way, occasionally fraught, frequently hilarious and sometimes poignant, and the colourful cast of characters he met, Tony realises that following mantras as simple as do something silly or find the courage to follow your intuition can make a huge difference in making life that little bit more enjoyable. Witty, charming and uplifting, The Fridge Hiker's Guide to Life will make you look at both life and your kitchen appliances in a whole new way. And uh, yeah, Tony Hawks lives in London. He, lead, he leads a diverse life and has various jobs such as performing stand-up comedy, appearing as a panellist on TV and radio. Have I got news for you? Uh, just a minute, I'm sorry, I haven't got a clue. Acting, writing, playing tennis and making music. His previous books include Playing the Moldovans at Tennis, One Hit Wonderland, A Piano in the Pyrenees and the international bestseller Round Island with a Fridge. And he says, uh, I should be donating all of the royalties I receive from this book to charities consistent with the themes outlined within it. Details at www.thefridgetrust.com. And I like this because I've written about this as like being the reason why explorers climb mountains and stuff. Uh, and he's talking about going to do something, a bit silly syndrome. Naturally, the adopted logic of those suffering from GTDSBS syndrome is flawed and can be easily exposed. I cite a short conversation I had with a mountaineer. Mountaineers are probably the most common casualties of this phenomenon, as an example of how easily this may be achieved. Why, in the bitter conditions of an alpine winter, are you tackling the dangerous and challenging northeastern face of the fearsome Matterhorn? Because it's there. But so are your slippers and the TV remote. QED, I think. And he talks about, uh, well, I'm just gonna read this little section out, including its footnote. So, as I stood there by the side of the road with my thumb out, waiting for the second lift of my heroic journey, it occurred to me that hitching is a great leveller. No hitcher is more special than another. When our beseeching thumbs are out, we all seem somehow equal. We live in a world that constantly tells us that one person is better than another. I think this is delightfully Irish, he's in a pub and he says, I noticed that a man with a healthy head of white hair and matching beard had been surveying the fridge with interest as he slowly supped on his pint. After a few minutes we made eye contact and he nodded to me, pointing at the fridge on its bar stool. Ah, sure, it's nice enough to see it out of context. That was my Irish accent. That was terrible, wasn't it? And I, to continue, uh, he goes, I was delighted by the measured delicacy of his remark, and I went and joined him and spent a delightful hour in his company until Tony returned to take me on his sightseeing excursion. The tour included the dramatic cliffs of Moa, the village of Doolin, Liston Farner, and the Burren Smokehouse where Tony's sister-in-law worked. She was a bubbly woman who insisted on showing me a video, usually shown to tourists, of how a salmon is smoked. I patiently sat through it despite having no interest in it whatsoever. I'd never considered being au fait with the procedure involved in smoking a salmon a social advantage. And afterwards I was rewarded with a good sized portion of the final product to take away. The irony was that I had no way of keeping it fresh, even though I was touring the country with a fridge. By the way, on my walk today, I saw a discarded fridge at the end of my road as well. And now uh, we get this little uh, exchange. Maybe it's married to him, said the one with the moustache. They're traveling together, aren't they? Maybe they're on their honeymoon. The pub clientele were in fits of laughter. It was time to set the record straight. The fridge and I aren't married. We're just good friends and there's nothing going on between us. He says, uh, why do people do that? Say, I'm sure when they're not sure at all. So often people say, oh, I'm sure you'll be fine as a means of preventing further dialogue on the subject. I've got to make this speech to a group of feminists about the importance of women staying in the home and I'm a bit worried about how it might go down. Oh, I'm sure you'll be fine. And I just want to read this bit from the ending because I think it's, uh, I think it's a nice way to end. Don't take it all so seriously. We attach so much importance to our lives because it feels like that's all there is. Is there more? Who knows? Perhaps there's an afterlife. Maybe not. Perhaps our bodies die and our spirits live on. Maybe not. I just don't know. What I do know is that the more importance we attach to our life, then the harder it is for us to enjoy it. If we can keep a sense of perspective about everything, learn to shrug, have a laugh and keep a sense of humour, then think how much easier it could all be. 
Perhaps don't take it all so seriously sounds flippant, irresponsible even, but take a moment to think about it. It reminds us that we're not as important as we think we are. In terms of the size of the universe, we have no more significance than a tiny ant or buzzing fly. Do we mourn or feel reg any regret if we kill a fly, a spider or an ant? Most of us don't because we don't consider them to be important. Arrogantly, we assume that we are. Well, perhaps we are important. Maybe what we've forgotten though is that everything is important and that we are no more important than anyone or anything else. And if everything is important, then it must be the case that nothing stands out above the rest. And so it must also be the case that conversely, nothing is important. Have you ever taken a long flight somewhere and flown over lots of different countries at night, looking down at the cities below with all the lights flickering in the houses? They seem like dots in a giant model world strewn beneath us. Millions of people living different lives in different worlds, and yet each one of them wrapped up in their reality, their everyday struggle for happiness, just as we are wrapped up in ours. It's humbling to think that my desire to buy a car, pass an exam, get a job, make up with an exchange lover, have a child, find a lost dog, win a football match or complete a list, are all replicated by these millions of people who are currently reduced to dots on a landscape. How many of them are taking it all too seriously? Since my fridge journey, I've genuinely tried to hold on to the lightness of being that came about as a result of the silliness of it all. There seems to be some benefit in not allowing our lives to become too entangled with weightiness, pride and the feeling that everything is of great consequence. Given the choice, I'd rather go with a shrug and smile than head in hands and furrowed brow. Life is only stuff happening. You're fridge hiking. Recognising it as that might just make it easier to deal with because every moment that you're unhappy is a waste of you. All right guys, we have the classic Dane Reed situation in which I forgot to film the outro to this video. So, The Fridge Hiker's Guide to Life by Tony Hawk. I gave it like a 3.5 out of five, it was okay. It did, as I say, feel a bit like just rehashing Round Island with a fridge. So I'd recommend just reading that instead. But overall, it was all right and it was, you know, professional quality, that's what my 3.5 out of five means. So there we have it, that's what I made of Fridge Hiker's Guide to Life by Tony Hawks. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.